listening to Everyday Engineering, the City of Madison's engineering podcast where we talk about infrastructure. Complex topics explained simply. From the water that flows down your drain to the rain and snow that drains into the lakes. By way, the curbs and streets we design. City engineering touches your life in so many ways. Explained right now in Everyday Engineering. The crisp crunch of an icy step is pretty likely in a Wisconsin fall or winter. However, walking is one thing, biking is a whole other world in the city of Madison. And yes, our cyclists love to ride no matter summer, winter. If there's a bike path, it's being used year round. And for us in engineering, it's our job to maintain them. My name is Hannah Molinitsky, City of Madison Engineering Division's Public Information Officer. And today I'm joined by Engineering Division Assistant Construction Supervisor Ryan Schmidt and Madison District 15 Alder and co founder of the organization Madison Bikes, Grant Foster. Thank you both for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Hannah. And I also should make a mention our guests are have their masks on. So um, if it is a little muffled when you're listening, listening to this, that is why. Okay, let's talk bikes. Okay, so before we start, can you both uh, kind of share what you do and then more specifically when it comes to bike paths? Sure, I'll start. This is Grant. Um, so I, as you said, I'm uh, Alder of District 15 and uh, also um, am still with the organization Madison Bikes. So with Madison Bikes, it's a uh, local nonprofit, all volunteer led, and we really just focus on uh, connecting people in the community with information, <clears throat> sponsoring activities, and just helping people stay connected to what's going on related to biking. Um, and then in my older role, obviously, I represent the wonderful residents of District 15. Um, and then I also serve on all of the city transportation bodies, um, so with a lot of focus around transportation policy. Ryan? So Ryan with the City of Madison Engineering, uh, I oversee sanitary and storm uh, construction projects. Uh, we'll deal with the storm conveyance system, ponds and greenways, so mowing, uh, maintenance, brush pickups, things along that line, uh, as well as obviously what we're here for today, the bike pass. Uh, we have summer maintenance, which includes mowing, uh, brush pickups, we do some invasive controls, as well as the winter, uh, we were responsible for all the snow removal. Um, well, not all the pass, but the engineering pass anyways. Sure, we'll, we'll get to that in just yeah. a few minutes. Sounds good. Yeah, but very busy. There's a lot to maintain in the city. Yes, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's an understatement. Just to say the least, yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, so let's start also when we get into the biking culture. Just in case people aren't aware if they're listening to this, if they're City of Madison residents or just visitors or, or maybe just listening because they're interested in this. So biking in Madison is very present and so are groups like Madison Bikes, which again, like we just heard from Alder Foster, advocate for cyclists. And Alder Foster, can you kind of share what role you've had in Madison Bikes and why it's important when it comes to keeping bike paths clear? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I mean, interestingly enough, my sort of entry point into bike advocacy was around winter biking. Hmm. So I, I actually, before coming in, I tried to look through my emails and find out when did this all happen. And so it was, <laughs> I think 2013 is when uh, after a couple winters of biking, I, I wrote an email into city staff and, um, you know, expressed some issues that I was having trying to make it through the winter on my bike. Um, I started showing up to the Ped Bike Motor Vehicle Commission meetings, sharing some of that information as well and starting to pay attention. Um, I ended up actually getting appointed to that, uh, that, that commission and serving there. And, you know, all the while there was pretty much in Madison, the only thing that was happening related to bike advocacy was this email listserv called the Bikies listserv. And it just felt to me like a lot of what was going on there was just a lot of complaining. And so I really wanted to find a way for people to organize and just start working towards solutions rather than complaining. Is that the term bikies? That, that was the name of the of the listserv. And okay. so, sure, I, people that love to bike, they could be bikey. Okay, okay. And a listserv for anyone who's listening is just basically an email list that <laughs> yeah. people sign in. On. Back before social media, right? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so you wanted to find a solution and there were there was some complaining, but you know if anything we like to hear from our community when we when we are maintaining and making sure. I know in engineering we like uh, we like to hear from our residents, our alders, our everyone to make sure that everything is maintained and that we're on it, keep our feet to the fire. Um, but it is a lot of work 
keeping it moving and cleared and maintained. So here in engineering, we work year round to make sure bike paths are not only designed efficiently and included in as many possible places in our city, but also maintained. And that means, yes, also in the winter. So we clear the paths. Um, we work with other city agencies. So I guess, Ryan, for you, how many do we have that we maintain? And I guess, what's the breakdown? And what is our strategy to keep up with winter when it comes to bike paths? Because when winter comes, there's no stopping her. Yeah. So we have, uh, there's three major paths that we take care of. The Southwest Bike Path, the Cannonball. Uh, then University Ave, uh, there's a couple different things. We have like the Monroe Street section, um, and then there's the University Ave, so there's the Contraflow, some things that we take care of on the west side of University, closer to Middleton, and then Bassett, we have the delineated bike lane that was new to last year, well, actually the year before, but we've extended that, and it sounds like we might extend that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So we take care of all of those uh, bike paths, as well as some connectors. Uh, there's a lot of feeds that come into those major paths that we uh, all also uh, maintain. Um, for the most part, uh, we're, we're using our tool cats with... And that would be a what, if uh, people aren't familiar so with the it's tool a, cat? Yeah, it's a four-wheeled, uh, all-wheel drive vehicle that has numerous different attachments. Uh, for snow removal, mainly our main uh, attachment is going to be a rotary brush. Uh, depending on the snowfall and how heavy it is, you know, different attachments will be used uh, to clear the snow. So when a snowstorm comes, okay, we know a snowstorm is coming. Mm -hmm. How quick are we out there? Bring me to an example or like a scenario. And cause I know that we have crews out there early and yes. multiple times, but how, what, walk me through that. So uh, yeah, you, you're an improv to meteorologist through the winter. <laughs> uh, you know, you're paying close attention to the weather reports. Uh, a lot of it's kind of based on your, your, it's a guess a lot of times, you know, you're trying to predict when the snow is going to start falling and make sure that you have crews in ready to start with that. Uh, our main priority is to have the bike pass open before community hours. So, you know, by 7 a.m. Uh, Monday through Friday, last year we, uh, have more funds that we're able to do that over now the weekends and holidays as well um so you know staffing again it's a guessing game i'm not gonna lie and say that we know exactly when it's going to start to snow sometimes you hit it sometimes you miss it but the, the goal is to have the pipe the pass open for commuters by 7 a.m and then obviously their commute home later in the day uh, but typically most crews start somewhere either at midnight or 3 a.m. to make sure that we have a big enough window to open up those paths. Um, midnight, we're out there at midnight to 3 a.m. to make sure that you can bike on your paths. Correct. So That's dedication, but that's our job. A but typical type start time will be somewhere in between midnight and 3 a.m. So how are we doing, Alder Foster, since you're a bike advocate and you bike all the time. Absolutely do. Yeah, doing great, honestly. <laughs> I mean, when I when I mentioned earlier that I, you know, I reached reached out back in 2013, <clears throat> I you know, I actually was speaking with the streets uh, division at the time with some of the challenges on the on-street bike lanes. Mm -hmm. And I I shared back then, you know, the the clearing on the paths is actually pretty good. It's some of the some of the issues that we're having on the on-street bike lanes that are that are even more problematic. Um, like but, what? Can you explain that a little bit more? Sure. Yeah. I mean, one of the one of the real tough ones is um, where there's a, a bike lane next to a parking a car parking lane, and so plows aren't able to get as you know all the way up to the curb, and over winter especially, you know, it starts to build up and cars slide out, and so it's just a real tough spot to get plowed out, um, and so the end result though is that a bike lane that's can become unrideable. Um, and then you've got people, be, you're, you have to basically ride right in the middle of traffic and nobody likes that. People on the bikes don't like it, people in the cars don't like it. So that, you know, that was one of the things, um, the windrows that would get created where the, the paths and the streets would intersect. Um, that was something where, you know, the street would, the, the street would get cleared, push the snow back up into the, the apron of the path. Um, and then there just wasn't a lot of coordination. So that might sit there for a long time and get hard and turn into a big puddle. So those are some of the things that um, I actually chaired a, a subcommittee to, to look specifically at what we could do to improve it. And one of, the, one of the recommendations was to get some more funding for staff so that they could expand it to a seven days a week instead of a five. Um, and that, I think, you know, this was um, the first winter where we tried that and it was great. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the issues with not having that funding before was you get a big snow event on a Friday mm -hmm. and, you know, as much as staff would love to get out there and take care of it, you know, they can't. And so by the time Monday rolls around, 
you know, two, three days, especially in the colder temperatures, and that can just become rock hard and really tough to get to get rid of at that point. So we've been making a lot of progress just over the last couple of years. Well, yay. Yeah, I would agree with the grant, too, that that's really helped uh, be able to get out and have the funding to have crews out, uh, you know, through the whole entire storm, which is, it helps in the long run. The the cleanup process, if you were to come in Monday after a snowstorm, even, let's say, Sunday day, uh, there's hard pack. It's really hard to get a lot of that off the surfaces without using some kind of product, which we really want to try to limit. So that that's helped re- reduce that quite a bit as well. And I think we talk about this on our other episodes of SaltWise and Salt um, Winter Maintenance Management here at the city, and we um, are a part of an organization that limits salt use as much as possible so that we can protect our local waterways. Um, you can go to rippleeffects.com for more information on that. Um, but it's uh, it's definitely a priority, and I, I can see and hear and understand that um, the sooner we get out there, the sooner we can, the easier it is to clear everything. So Absolutely. making sure that the funding is there, it makes sense. Um, I read this on our website. Hopefully it's accurate. Uh, Madison's bicycle transportation network includes more than 55 miles of shared use paths, uh, 133 miles of streets with bike lanes, and 116 miles of signed bicycle routes. Roughly. We'll, <laughs> we'll just say we'll, we'll, give a, we'll give that, we'll give some wiggle room there. That's a lot of space to keep clear and i would say it seems for i'm not a bikey by any means i love bikes i love riding bike but i'm not an avid biker um that seems like a lot and it also seems like madison seems more bike friendly than than maybe other cities but i don't know how how that how we stack up yeah well i mean it depends what you're uh point of comparison is, I would say. So sure. it, as compared to other cities in Wisconsin, where I, I think nobody would, would question, we're number one. Uh, <laughs> in terms of, uh, sorry, Milwaukee. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the, the country also, you know, very often we're in the top 10 cities for biking across yes. the country. So, um, you know, and that, that really is the result of uh, decades and decades of a commitment to, to putting in that infrastructure, right? Painting the bike lanes on the streets. Um, our shared use paths network is really awesome. I mean, people are, are very envious of it. Mm-hmm. And so it makes sense that we want to maintain it in the winter as well and have access to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, compared to other cities around the world, well, we've got a long way to go. So we're, you know, we're about at 5% mode share. So the, you know, the number of work commuters that, that regularly use a bicycle, about 5% in Madison. Um, and, I think, you know, if you talk to our director of transportation, Tom Lynch, you know, he, he raised, well, maybe we should be able to get to 10 percent uh, bike mode share. And I think that's a really reasonable goal. But when you start to think about how we do that, um, you know, you start to identify where those gaps are. And so as much as we have a really great system right now, just a few key gaps in that network can really keep a lot of people from jumping on their bike and heading to work or to the grocery store. Sure. And I guess, how do we stack up when it comes to keeping them clear? I mean, do other municipalities really focus on making sure and get out there and clear them? Or I guess, where do we stack up there? Yeah, I I think, you know, from my standpoint, and like Grant said, you know, sorry, Milwaukee, but I think that we're in in Wisconsin, I think we're really, we stand alone. Uh, I visited Minneapolis, who is always in the top five. Uh, to watch some of their snow program to see if we can implement some of the things that they're doing there. Uh, and I, I believe that we're we're shadowing, if not, and we're improved in some of the areas that Minneapolis is currently doing. So I feel very strongly that I can say that we're, we're ahead of the curve, I think, big time when it comes to bike path maintenance. I love to hear that. That makes my job a little easier to project a little bit about what we do as a public information officer. Uh, how do we keep up with all those paths we talked about? I guess, do some get plowed more than others? Others, how do you decide? What sort of thought process kind of goes into that? Yeah, so paths, uh, arterial paths would be the main focus. Uh, those are going to be your major commuter commuter paths. Uh, so the thoroughbred into and out of the city, uh, the Southwest bike path, the Cannonball, and then a lot of the university path that I talked about earlier. Those are going to be some of the major ones that engineering takes care of. Um, and our all of our bike paths that we're responsible for, our crews all get sent out at the same time. Um, the main are going to be the main priority, so making sure that the main path is open. Uh, you're going to do that first, and then you're going to come back through and hit some of your connectors, um, steps, bus was uh, granted, talked about windrows. That's going to be a problem that we face all the time. Streets comes through, so you might have just plowed something. 
45 minutes later, streets comes through and you have a wind roll. So our crews are back checking those. Uh, so from engineering standpoint, I, again, we start basically all of our routes at the same time. And then it's just clean up as you come work back towards the shop and we stay out until they're clear and everything's open. Sure. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think one way to think of it for those that aren't, aren't real familiar with it, I mean, think about the way we, that we do it on our city streets, right? We've got salt routes and not salt routes. Mm -hmm. And those salt routes are our, our busier roads, right? The arterials, the collectors. And so streets prioritizes those, right? When a, when a storm starts up and as accumulations fall, they're working to keep those open. And then once that's done, if there's a lot of snow on the ground, then they'll come back through and clear off all the local streets, right? So, you know, it's, it's kind of a similar approach with our path networks. We've, we've got a lot of paths, but the focus really is on those arterial ones, the most, you know, heavily used ones first. And then, um, you know, once that's done, then going out to some of the, the smaller connector paths. Um, and I think in terms of what we can do to continue to improve is continuing to expand what we consider our arterial paths versus not, right? I mean, we've got, we've definitely got the key ones uh, covered right now, but there are some really important connections that mm -hmm. don't make that first cut yet. So that's one of the areas I think we can continue to improve on. Sure. You know, there's always the push and pull between cyclists and drivers in cities. And I guess my question, this is probably more for Alder Foster for Madison Bikes, but um, we can all discuss. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> everyone's usually got an opinion on this. Um, does that exist here, that push and pull in Madison, I guess? And why is that when we're working to be always bike friendly? Yeah. I mean, it, it pretty much just comes down to space, honestly. I mean, I think some people think it's maybe more of a money issue, but in reality, it's space. Um, and so, the, you know, the bike paths are great because there's not that fight for space. You know, we, if we've got these um, old rail corridors or along our, our lake fronts and rivers and we can install a separate path for biking and walking. Nobody's really fighting about that. Sure, we gotta, we gotta make sure we pay to, to clean it off, but it's not getting in driver's way. Uh, but the rest of the, of the transportation network for cyclists is the road network, right? And so that's where it gets a little bit more challenging. Um, again, we've done a really good job over the last several decades to find where it's you know, the low hanging fruit where we can get some bike lanes marked without it really interrupting things or causing a lot of grief. Mm -hmm. um, but now, as I mentioned before, we've still got some pretty important gaps and they're not easy to close because closing those gaps really comes down to making some hard trade offs. Right. So are we are we willing to take out a lane of, of travel for cars? Are we willing to remove on street car parking in order to make room for that for that bike facility? So that's I think that's where you start to feel that push and pull is when you've got a, a project and you say, you know what, we can either have bike lanes or on street car parking. And obviously people that need and want a place to park their car are going to want the car parking and those that want to ride a bike are going to want the bike lane. I think that and I can I can say I sit in on a lot of uh, meetings where we're designing the streets and um, and it's my job to kind of project, you know, the public part of it so that everyone's in the know on especially the bigger projects um, that impact a lot of people or may disrupt people. And um, there's always the question I know in engineering. What about the bikes? What about the people who ride bikes? So just know that that conversation is always happening. I think I'm proud to share that because um, we not only maintain the bike paths and it's important no matter what season it is, but also when we're designing, that's very present. And then if we miss something, we hear from <laughs> our community, which is wonderful, and our alders. Yeah. Um, okay, last question as we kind of wrap up here. Uh, well, maybe I have two. Uh, one for resources, so start thinking about that if people want to um, kind of tune into this biking in the winter. But my question, you know, you, you're driving, you might be listening to this podcast, hopefully, on your <laughs> no, hands free. Uh, but you see somebody biking in the middle of the winter in Madison. What drives people to bike in the winter when it's snowing, <laughs> pouring, cold? I mean, that is dedication to cycling. And I, and I love it. It's awesome. But what really pushes people who love to bike to really go for it, no matter the season? You got to be pretty, pretty intense to bike in the middle of a Wisconsin winter. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I'll take the compliment, but to be honest <laughs> with you, it's just not as nearly as hard or impressive as some people might think. <laughs> I know it may, you may not believe me when I say that, but truly, I mean, once you get in the habit of biking places, right? Um, I'm, I mean, in our case, we actually don't even own a car anymore. So 
the reality is if we want to get somewhere, we're going to get on a bike because that's how we move around, my family and, and myself. And that, that actually is the case for a lot of people. Um, I mean, there's a lot of benefits to not having to own and operate a car. Um, but really, I think all of the benefits of biking, uh, you know, especially for transportation, are there in the winter just like they are in the summer, right? So you get exercise, the, the lower cost of, of not having to buy fuel and have a car, just getting outside, I mean, it's super good for your mental health. Um, and honestly, especially in the winter, I mean, I, I've, I grew up in Wisconsin. I think everybody knows how easy it is to get down and blue in the wintertime and um, getting exercise and, and especially getting outside. It's just, it's so easy to not do that in the winter. And if you just commit to, to riding your bike, it's all taken care of for you. So it's just really, honestly, it just helps the winter get by that much sooner. Um, and it's kind of nice to not have the paths so full of people in the wintertime. You get to enjoy the space <laughs> a little bit more. And they're, they're hopefully cleared in time, which they are. Absolutely. We're starting at midnight now that we've learned. I've learned some new things today. Hopefully everyone who's listened has learned a little bit too. Um, I did not know that you are bike only, Alder Foster. That is awesome. It, yeah. uh, and the paths <laughs> are clear for you. Uh, any resources, if people want to report a bike yeah. path, Ryan, can you kind of hit on that a little bit Ab as we wrap up here? Absolutely. So on the city website, we have a report problem, uh, which I ideally we don't get a lot of those because we're out doing our job. But obviously there's going to be things that sometimes are missed or crews just haven't gotten there, depending on the storm. Uh, you know, sometimes we're a little bit behind of where we'd like to be. Um, but definitely go on the city website. Um, you can fill out, file out a report. And we'll get crews out there to get that cleared up. Um, and I think that's a great resource uh, from a community aspect of how to reach engineering. Yeah, make sure. Hey, mm -hmm. this bike path. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and well, it goes out citywide too. So if it's not engineering that maintains that section of the path, the appropriate department will be notified as well to get staff out there as well. Perfect. Any other resources people should know about? Yeah. Alder Foster, we, I, I'm, I, I have a sense that we're going to probably do a winter biking specific episode, hopefully in the near future. But definitely, I, yeah. So um, I mean, MadisonBikes.org is the is the website. Um, really active Facebook group, Madison Bike Community. Um, lots of, of good information there. You can just post questions and you'll get all kinds of answers from people that, have, that are out there doing it, have experience. Uh, and then really um, through both of those uh, avenues, you can watch for um, this year we're doing something special. So for the last probably 10 plus years in Madison, we've, uh, there's been a winter bike fashion show where we get together and um, really just show off. How do, you, how do you do it? What kind of gear do you wear? How do you keep your glasses from fogging up? What kind of bike, you know, do you need studded tires? Um, and this year with COVID, we're doing it all um, online. So we're gonna be actually producing a, a series of, of little videos, again, just to help educate folks and, and inspire them to get out there and keep riding through the winter. That's the fun stuff. You got it. So that you can ride on our clear paths. Okay, <laughs> thank you both for being here. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you wanna connect with us or you have a suggestion for another topic you want us to kind of dig into right here on Everyday Engineering, click over to the City of Madison Engineering Facebook and Twitter because we are always here for you every day in engineering. <laughs>